What's up everyone, Ryan here, and today I'm gonna provide a full tutorial for all the golfer skills in EA Sports PGA Tour, including how you can improve your golfer, and then how you unlock skill points, and then of course, how you get new shot types and upgrade shot types in the game. I will also be providing bonus tips along the way on key areas to focus on to help you be a little bit better out there on the course. If you all get some enjoyment or find this video helpful, drop a like, it really helps the channel, and and subscribe for more i am doing a full tutorial playlist for this game i'll have it linked right down in the description so if you're looking for other tutorials that's the best place to look depending on when you're watching this the full series could already be live i also have tons of other ea sports pga tour content on the channel including gameplay videos a review and also a full career mode series so you can check those out on the channel page so in EA Sports PGA Tour, there are 50 levels to progress through to upgrade your golfer. When you're in the main menu and you look at the top right of the screen, so that shows your golfer level. Right now, you can see I'm a level 40. The max is level 50. But each time you level up in this game, you actually unlock two skill points to spend. So you will get 100 skill points to spend total. So that means that you will not be able to max out every stat in this game based on only your skills alone. But you can also get equipment boost with club specs and golf ball specs i actually cover that in another video if you want to learn more about club specs i have a video that you can check out in my tutorial playlist right down the description if you wanted to check that out and learn more about the equipment boost in the game but you gain experience to level up your golfer by completing challenges completing quests and just by playing golf rounds in this game so to actually upgrade your golfer when you're on the main menu you're going to navigate through the top of the screen with rb or r1 to go into the golfer tab this will take you straight to the skills section and this is not only where you can upgrade your golfer but you can also retrain your golfer and i want to point that out i've been receiving a lot of questions how do you actually respec your character which means reallocate your skills you can do that but it is very expensive this game the primary currency for buying club specs is reward points you can see that at the top right of the screen i have 8625 of the gold coins with the golf round if i click on one of these stats before we get into the deep dive on each skill so say i want to retrain power so if we go back here and go all the way back say i wanted to take get rid of those two nodes i can i will get 17 skill points refunded but look how much it costs 3400 golfer coins out of my 8625 that is a lot. So I would not retrain until you're level 50 because by level 50 as you're playing this game a lot you're gonna have so much more reward coins at that point so it's expensive it is really expensive but you can retrain any of the stats in EA Sports PGA Tour you have five primary stat categories power driving approach short game and putting and under each one you have different subsections so you have accuracy, you have control, you have recovery, you have putting, which is its own, and of course, power. Now talking about just power, power increases the swing speed, which increases the max distance of all shot types. Accuracy increases the miss hit tolerance window, decreases the impact of off plane swings, and decreases the shot dispersion of all driving shots. So speaking of accuracy, accuracy is key in this game. The big one there, not only the miss hit tolerance, but the off the impact of all plane swings, but the shot dispersion of all driving shot types or the shot, not as much driving accuracy for me, but the approach accuracy and, and the short game actually is key. So in this game, when you're zoomed in on the golf course and you see that gray region shown at your aim marker, that is the dispersion zone. Your golf ball, even with perfect tempo and perfect power, can land anywhere in that gray window. That's the dispersion zone, or some people just call it the RNG zone, random number generator, because it is random where your ball is gonna land. But as you improve your accuracy, that region is gonna get so much smaller. It is key early on in this game to focus on accuracy on the approach and short game. Driving actually is still pretty easy. It's pretty easy to hit fairways. So you can see I didn't really focus in that right now here at level 40. And that is the reason 
because to me, approach accuracy and control accuracy is key. Now, moving on to control. Control increases the natural spin, the amount of post shot spin that can be applied if you have that turned on in the difficulty settings menu. You don't have to have post shot spin to turned on. I actually don't have it turned on. And then also the amount of shot shaping you can put on the shot. Loft, de loft, draw and fade. So a lot of people have been asking me, how do you get more spin on the ball? Upgrade your control stat. Your control skill is key if you want to put more natural spin on the ball. Not only can you put more natural backspin, but also you can add more loft to the shot, to each shot, which is then going to add even more backspin on the approach. So one thing that's important to mention in this game is that you don't start with all the shot types. So all the skill categories you see on the left side of the screen there, each skill can be upgraded to level 10 max. But as you progress through there, any of the levels that have a shield or badge on there is showing a shot type. So each shot type ranges from bronze skill level, but can be upgraded to silver skill level and gold skill level. More on that will be coming later in this video. But if you want to unlock a shot type, you have to level up to a certain level to unlock each shot type. So for example, if I want to unlock the power approach shot, I got to get to at least power level four. If I want to unlock the approach finesse shot, which is a key shot in this game, I need to get to level three on approach control. If I want to unlock the spinner shot or runner pick spinner, I have to be level three, four or five in control to unlock those shot types, at least the starting level bronze. If I want to unlock the Texas wedge, which for those of you that like to putt on the fairway close to the green, the only way you can do that is with the Texas Wedge. And to unlock this, you have to have at least level three putting. So I will talk more about shot types and upgrades later on in this video. Just wanted to briefly touch on that right now because shot types are very important in this game. So my key areas I focused on right away. If you're learning, what do you want to do first? I did three power and then I did three putting so I can unlock the Texas wedge shot type. And then I focused on accuracy and control on approach and accuracy accuracy and control on short game. And then you can see I really focused on recovery short game as well. I focused on driving control. I, I regret that. I do actually regret focusing on this because I don't actually shot shape very much off the tee because that diagonal swing plane that you have to hit on tour difficulty, I'm not good at it at all. So I avoid the draw and fade at all, at all costs. So if I was going to retrain, I would go ahead and take off these controls and the spec into something else, but I haven't done that yet. Just kind of a little bonus tips throughout kind of key areas that I like to focus on. So as we're going through shot types, an important thing that a lot of people are missing is some shot type upgrades require two different levels being unlocked in different categories. For example, say we go to the finesse shot itself. So the finesse shot is my favorite shot. I use the finesse shot on almost every approach in the game. I highly recommend you unlock this shot as quick as you can because this is the shot you will use for partial shots when you're in between clubs. It's really good. So the finesse shot does have more roll and less backspin, but when you add loft to it, you can still generate a lot of backspin. But the finesse shot is the true partial shot in this game when you're in between clubs. I hit this golf shot like 90% of the time. But to unlock it first, you have to have approach control level three, but you can also upgrade it. So as you scroll through here, we can unlock the knockdown shot, which is a shot to decrease the impact of the wind at approach control five. But what I wanna find here is the finesse upgrade. So as we look at level seven of the approach control, you see it shows meets one of requirements four. Those are all the different categories that you need to complete to upgrade that specific shot type. So if you look at knockdown, to upgrade knockdown from bronze to silver, you have to have approach control seven and approach accuracy six. A lot of people are thinking they're upgrading it, only meeting one of the criteria. You have to meet both. Both of them have to appear yellow 
and highlighted for you to actually have that specific shot type upgraded. That's a common mistake I see in questions and comments that people are not getting the shot types actually unlocked because they're not meeting all the requirements. What I recommend is getting this finesse shot upgraded to gold. And honestly, finesse shot upgraded to gold and short game shot, most of the short game shots upgraded to gold besides the runner shot. So then if I wanted to upgrade the finesse shot from silver to gold, I would need approach control eight and approach accuracy to level seven. So as you increase and upgrade your shot types from bronze to silver to gold, the shot types actually that accuracy dispersion zone that is key on each shot, it's so much smaller. That is why it is key to upgrade the shot types that you use the most. For me, I use the finesse shot so much, so I need that one as gold. Now, if we move as we move to short game, I will go ahead and tell you all the shot type that you will rarely ever use is the runner. I use the spinner a lot, I use the flop shot a lot, and I use the pick shot from the sand a lot. So those are kind of the key ones. But honestly, my goal was to get to gold on all of the short game badges to decrease that dispersion zone and improve all of these shot types. This was kind of my main focus early on. I wanted the finesse gold. But other than that, I wanted all of these gold because I use these shots a lot. Maybe I use long, I don't use long flop very much, but I use high flop, I use pick, I use spinner. The only one I don't use is runner, but I still wanted to have the recovery control and accuracy for short games, which is why I still have the ones I don't really use very much to goad. And the last stat category I wanted to touch on is the recovery stat. It decreases the impact of distance and accuracy penalties applied when in bad lies such as the rough and sand on all approach shot types. So when you're in the rough or sand in this game, that dispersion area, the gray area gets a lot bigger. One thing you can do to negate that and make still make that dispersion zone smaller when you're in the rough for send is by upgrading your approach recovery and short game recovery another thing in this game that's very powerful and really overpowered is the hack shot so i don't have it unlocked for ryan gamer yet my creative character but i do play the hack shot a lot with the playable pros and i think what i'm going to do is decrease my driving control and unlock this recovery shot very quickly and the reason is the hack shot basically, well not basically, it does. It gets rid of that distance penalty when in the rough. So if you're sitting with an 85 to 95% lie, when you pull out the hack shot, your lie changes to a 99 or 100. A lot of times it's 100. The hack shot is huge in this video game. You unlock it at approach recovery five, but it's one of those things where the rough right now, the way it sits is not, it doesn't affect you very much. That's the reason why I haven't really felt the need yet to uh, have the hack shot for my character. But the more I play it with the pros, especially on tougher courses, I'm like, you know, I need the hack shot because it is very powerful, especially if you find yourself in the rough a lot. So there you have it. There is a full skills overview on where you upgrade your golfer, how to upgrade them, and also how you unlock new shot types and upgrade your shot types. Another thing I wanted to briefly mention is if you look at the bottom right of the screen, it shows your overall stats and course fit. The course fit, if you select a course in this game and you're in quick play and you see the course, it shows the course fit. So it's basically showing your overall stat and skill allotment based on your golfer and the equipment boost you have. So you can see in, in bright yellow, that's just my skills. Now with the equipment boost that I have applied to my golfer, I have legendary club specs for irons wedges. You can see I have big equipment boost there that further increase my skills. So my player overall is sitting right now around 82 overall base skills. But with all of my equipment applied, my skill overall level is 92. So that shows that you may not be able to max out your character with skills specifically because you only have 100 skill points to spend. But you can further increase your player overall rating by applying club specs, golf ball specs. I think there's definitely gonna be a way to get to 99 or close to that with your player. Now that's not gonna be fully maxed out in all stats, 
because the club specs, although my overall is 92, it does feel like sometimes the club specs don't make as big of a difference as I want them to. But I will say the actual pro club specs, the Hideki Matsuyama, the Jordan Speed, Dustin J, any of the pros in the game, when you see those club specs in the score, for the most part, for irons and wedges, those make a huge difference. So those are the ones I would focus on in the store. But you all will have to let me know, what areas are you focusing on in the skill tree? What did you do early on? Did you all do something similar than me? Focused on power a little bit for first, focus on a little putting to unlock the Texas wedge, and then start focusing on accuracy, control. I think the key things are accuracy and control. If I just say the biggest things, approach accuracy, approach control. Short game accuracy, short game control. They are key in this video game. Do not overlook those. You want that dispersion zone as small as possible. Driving accuracy is not as important to me. Driving control, I don't do a lot of shot shaping. That's not as important to me, but it may be important to some. But I will say power is important. I would spec into th level three power as quickly as you can. It is key in this game. But if you all got some enjoyment, drop a like. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe for more and check the full tutorial playlist down in the description. It could be that there's other tutorials live you missed. I have a full golf bag overview, club spec overview. I I'm gonna create so many tutorials on this game, so be on the lookout for them. But I greatly appreciate all the support. Let me know what you're focusing on with your golfer in a comment below. And also, if you have any other tips that may help other players, feel free to leave that in the comment. As some people might be going through and reading it and learn something that you're using that may help them. And if you all did not know this, I have a full career mode series on the channel. I'm having a blast with that one. You can check out that series. Plenty more EA PGA Tour stuff here. And also, I have a second channel, Gamer Ability 2. Get on over there. Link in the description to that. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers on the second channel early this year, so be a part of that. You all are all legends. I will see you in the next one. As always, have a fantastic day, everybody.